Okay. Um, Z scores. Um, like to know what Z scores are. So, if first things to know about a Z school um, is that it is for a sample uh, observation. So, any observation. or in a sample or from a sample uh, can be converted to a Z school provided um, you know the mean of the sample which is X bar and you know the standard deviation of the sample which is S and Z-schools are a linear transformation, so it is a linear transformation of the sample. In other words, if you start with a sample of n observations, sample size is n, you can obtain n Z-schools. So, if you can obtain NZ scores from a sample containing N observations, it is always also possible to go back. I should probably draw that better. Um, you can go back from the Z scores. So I'm going to show you how to find the Z score of an observation from a sample. First, we'd like to know how to convert an observation to a z-score from a sample. So, if you take an observation, x, let x be the observation, from a sample with mean x bar, and standard deviation S. Then the Z score corresponding to that sample is given by X minus X bar divided by S. So X minus X bar divided by S. We call it a linear transformation because if you rewrite this expression, you can rewrite it as 1 over s times x minus x bar over s. If you want to simplify it further, you can write it as 1 over s times x plus of minus x bar over s. This sort of looks like Z is equal to M X plus B. So we all know M X plus B is nothing but a line. So what the Z school t does for us is it takes an observation, applies a linear transformation, and you end up getting um, a Z school. Now, because of the structure of this equation will end up calling um, the transformation as a linear transformation. So, if you have the mean of a sample and if you have the standard deviation of a sample, you can convert every observation from the sample and all observations that may or may not belong to the sample uh, um, to a z school. If it is possible for us to convert an observation to a z school, it is also possible to do the reverse operation. So, suppose you have an observation x which resulted in a z school of z. So, let z be the z school of an arbitrary. observation from a sample whose mean is x bar and standard deviation 
is S. Now, I call it arbitrary because the observation could come from the sample itself, or it could be something that belongs to the sample. Uh, in other words, it, the observation may not necessarily be a part of the sample at all. So, suppose you have a z-score, you can find the observation that resulted in the z-score z using this formula. x is equal to z times s plus x bar. If a linear transformation resulted in a z-score, only a linear transformation would bring the observation back. Um, therefore, uh, whatever reverse operation that we're using must also be a linear transformation. Um, if it's not obvious right now, you can look at this equation and see that z is nothing but m, and, uh, uh, excuse me, z is not m. Um, S is M, the slope, and X bar is nothing but the Y intercept. So, which is of the form X is equal to MZ plus B, where M is nothing but the standard deviation of the sample, and B is the mean of the sample. So once again, if you want to do the reverse operation, what we're actually doing mathematically is a linear transformation using the slope and the, um, using the standard deviation as a slope and sample mean as the y-intercept. So as long as you know the two formulas that I just wrote, um, you can find the z-score of any observation from a given sample. So um, let's do a couple of examples. <clears throat> the first example, let's say um, we have a sample. Consider the following sample. Um, let's say the observations are 17.12, and we'd like to find the z-scores for, um, let's say, 18.49, which is from the sample itself, so it is from data, and 16.9. So you don't have a 16.9 from the data, but of course you can find a z-score of any observation pertaining to the sample. So I have one from the sample itself and one that is not from the sample. So, if you want to find the z-scores, the first thing we have to do is to find the mean and the standard deviation. So to do that, I'm going to use a TI calculator. First step is to enter the data. So I press start, press 1, and start entering the data. 17.12, 18.49, 16.9, 20.14, 22.29, and lastly 16.1. So now we have the information in here, um, we can find the mean uh, and the standard deviation. Press start again, go over to calc, and we want one variable statistics. Press 1 and press second 1 which will bring up list 1. Um, press enter now and you can see that the mean is 18.388 and the standard deviation of the sample is 2.44. So x bar is 18.3. Let's round it and write it as 18.39. Um, standard deviation is 2.4486. Let's round that and write it as 2.45. So we have to find two z-scores. So the first case is where the observation is 18.49. So 
I just have to put this in the formula z is equal to x minus x bar divided by s. I am converting an observation x to z, so I have to use this formula, which would give me 18.49 minus 18.39 divided by 2.45. So, 18.49 minus 18.39 divided by 2.45 give me an answer of 0 0.0408. So the z-score of the observation 18.49 is 0 0.0408. So the next observation we have is 16.9. So we can use the same process to find the z-score of 16.9. So second case, when z is 16.9, um, we use the same formula, x minus x bar divided by s, it's nothing but z, um, excuse me, um, that is x, x is 16.9, so you have 16.9 minus 18.39, which is the mean, divided by the standard deviation 2.45. So we do the same process again and we'd find that 16.9 minus 18.39 divided by 2.45 is negative 0 0.6081. Um, 816, you can bound it and you can write it as negative 0.6082. So that is the z-score corresponding um, to the observation 16.9. So 16.9 was not even in the data set um, that was provided to us, but we are able to find the z-score of that particular observation also. So that is the nice thing about having um, z-scores. You can find z-scores for any observation, any numerical value, as long as you, you have a reference sample for which you know the mean and the standard deviation. So we're done with the forward part. Now let's see if we can do a reverse operation. Suppose the z scores of two observations from the given sample are 1.24 and negative 1.02. What are the observations? So we can use the reverse operation to find these observations. So um, the z-score is provided at 1.24 and negative 1.02. The first, uh, first z-score that we have is negative 1.24. Now, before I start getting into the mathematics and finding the observation, let me write an important remark. A z score that is negative will always correspond to an observation less than the mean x bar. That is the first remark. Likewise, a z-score that is 
inclusive. We always correspond to an observation greater than the mean. Expand. So, what would happen if the z score is zero? An observation whose z score is zero will always be the mean itself. So, even before you start solving for the observation, just by looking at the z score, you can get a couple of ideas. So, if the z score is negative, the observation that you're trying to find will definitely be less than the mean. If the z score is positive, the observation you're trying to find will always be greater than the mean. And if the z score is zero, then the observation will just be the mean itself. So, let's see um, if we can do the reverse process and find the values uh, to lie in reference with or in reference to the mean, like we discussed. So, the first case we have is z is equal to 1.24. So, that is a positive z score, so you can guess. So, guess where x would be. My guess is that the observation that I'm trying to find, x, is going to be greater than the mean of 18.39. That is my guess. So, let's see, when I find the observation, if, the, if this particular condition is satisfied. Now, why should x be greater than 18.39? Because the z-score is positive. So, the reverse operation can be achieved using the formula x is equal to z times s plus x bar. Well, x bar is 18.39, z is given in the problem as 1.24, and the standard deviation was 2.45. I put them all together in the calculator and I find my answer to be 1.24 times 2.45 plus 18.39. That gives me an answer of 21.428. Was my guess correct? Well, 21.428 is definitely bigger than 18.39. Awesome. I had a great guess. Um, next, we have z is equal to negative 1.02. Would you like to make a guess? guess as to whether the observation that we'll find would it be greater than the mean or would it be less than the mean? I say that the observation that we'll be finding would be less than the mean of 18.29. Let's, let's see if this is true. So the reverse formula is x is equal to z times s plus x bar. Um, z is negative 1.02, which is given in the problem, times 2.45, which is the standard deviation, plus 18.39. And I plug this in the formula, uh, or in the, using the calculator, and I find minus 1.02 times 2.45 plus 18.39. 39. Press enter. Ah, I believe I used the rule negative. If you want to specify a negative number, you have to use the specialized negative sign, um, which is the uh, answer key over here. Now press enter, and you'd find the answer to be 15.891.
And it's clearly 15.81 is definitely less than the mean that we had. So if the Z score is negative, the observation that you're trying to find will be less than the mean. Last but not least, this was not stated initially in the problem, so um, let's just find, let's find um, the observation with a Z score of zero. By now, I'm sure you might have figured it out, um, the observation is nothing but the mean itself. But let's see if the reverse formula gives us the same answer. The formula is Z times S plus X bar. Z is given as zero, so you have zero times the standard deviation, which is 2.45, plus 18.39. Zero times 2.45 is zero. I don't need a calculator for that. So zero plus 18.39, and of course zero plus 18.39 is also zero. I don't need a calculator for that as well. And as, I, as we stated in the remark earlier, um, if the z-score is zero, then the observation will correspond to the mean, and as you can see, that the observation is in fact 18.39. So, um, I've shown you some computations pertaining to finding z-schools. Um, you might wonder, why do we have to find z-schools? Z-schools are important because they are related to what we call normal distributions, which are very significant in statistics. And also, if, you, if they are related to a distribution, you must also understand that um, distributions result in probabilities, and probabilities are connected to percentiles, which makes that score a form uh, of a percentile. Uh, I hope that uh, you learned uh, how to find that score in this video. Uh, practice more on uh, finding that scores. Thank you.